Pringles and said, so should we start? Yeah, people will join. Yeah. People will join instead. Yes, sir. So okay. you and I can learn. There's no point in you and me not learning, isn't it? Okay, sir. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. I can see you. Okay. So basically, uh, uh, the, the, the simplest thing to understand this is, is MRI is a magnet, okay? And, and when the MRI magnet works, it makes the, the protons uh, align and, and, and the energy that is used to align them, the duration where it's aligned for, and when you let go and they go back to their normal status is what creates energy. And that energy is picked up by a scanner at the bottom of it, and that converts itself into gray and white uh, uh, scales. And that's what gives you a picture. That's the easiest definition of an MRI scan. But unfortunately, you have to know more than that for your exams, okay? So, so you need to know that there is T1-weighted images, T2-weighted images, that is fat uh, uh, suppression images, there's gadolinium surgeries, and there's MR osteograms, okay? So okay. one, two, uh, uh, fat suppression, and then gadolinium and MR osteograms. Let's understand what it is. There's a machine, somebody goes into it, and a picture comes out of it, okay? Uh, it, it, and, and we'll now understand what a T1, T2 fat suppression and all these things are. So we'll do spend short time on that, okay? So, so the basic thing to remember is that you have T1 and T2. So water has two in it, HTO. So everything in water will be more prominent on T2s. Everything with everything but water will be prominent in T1. So if you have fat, uh, uh, incidentally, the, the, the image that fat makes is is it takes less time or less it, it does than water does. So the fat and water are similar. So if you do a T2 image and you want to subtract fat for it, then you do it in a shorter duration, which means that the fat does not come on it, okay? So in a T1, the fat is hyper intense as it will be on T2. The water is hyper intense on T1s and hyper intense on T2. And that's the big difference to understand where there is a, a T1 image or a T2 image, you look where there should be fluid and then you see what it looks like, okay? So uh, T2H2O, there's a two in it, so therefore it should be water predominant pictures. Bone and fibrous tissue and cartilage look nearly the same in both, except the fat and the water is, is different depending on whether you suppress it or not. Okay, so the next thing is, you must understand the basic principles. And basically, like I said before, is you use a magnet to align the disrupted um, protons and, and then you keep it aligned and when you let it go it goes back to its resting position and that's what generates uh, radio frequency energy which is converted into a picture so do you understand that uh, Satish? Uh, yeah, yes sir I understand. So you, you must be able to reproduce in the exam an MRI scan is a machine which aligns uh, uses the magnet to align the, the protons and when those protons are let go, the energy they release from going back to their resting stage is where it can generate images. There are two types. I'll tell you how our T1 and T2 is generated. It depends on how long you leave them aligned and how long you, you allow them to go back to normal. That's what generates the pictures. Okay, so, so the two other things you need to understand on MRI scan is TR, which is a repetition time. It means how many times you have successive pulses to, to make uh, it changes picture and the time to echo T is is the delivery between the pulses Okay, so the amount of time you give them the dose is TR and the amount of time uh, in time In between each dose is a TE time so TR and T you need to understand so now we know that um, a magnet aligns them uh, for the duration of the time that is uh, uh, it, it's it's aligned, it is called the TR time, and the dis difference, or the time between when it's aligned and not aligned is TE time. So these are important things to understand and remember. They're not difficult, but sometimes people get confused in the heat of the exam life, okay? So T1 time, we're not talking about uh, T2 images and T1 images, T1 time is the longitudinal relaxation time. And, and it is a time taken from, from the protons to realign. And the T2 time is when the protons are excited. Okay, so this is not T1, T2 images, but T1 time and T2 time. We know why we're talking about this, okay. So the T1 weighted images, now we're talking about T1 and T2 images, are produced by using short TE and TR times. Do you know what TE and TR was? Uh, yes, sir. Go on then. Uh, TR was the repetition time. Yes. And T 
TE was uh, I just forgot sir. Echo time, yeah. Echo time. Echo time. The time when the when the the the, 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 the protons were kept aligned, and the time that was the difference between when they were left alone and aligned again. So these are the times. So if we have yeah. short TE and short TR times, and that's a T1 image. Yeah. Okay. And if you have a prolonged yeah. uh, uh, TE and TR times, then it's a T2 image. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to have a fat suppression, you shorten the time between T, the T and TR time between T1 and T2. So what you get for T2 for water, you have it less than that. So although it is, it is longer, but, but it is shorter compared to your T2 weighted images. So the fat suppression images is created by making the TE and the TR time shorter. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna move on until you guys understand this. So do you understand that, Stish? Uh, yes, sir, I understand. But uh, you said in the T1 uh, image, uh, both the T and TR are reduced. But in fat suppression image, also you said that T E and T R are reduced. So what is the difference between the two? They're even less than T1. Okay, less than T1. Okay. So it is important to understand that it is between the times and, 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 and what is happening, okay? So the echo time and TR time. So if you have a long TR and long TE time, then that's the, the T2, T2 time. T2. Yeah? yeah, if you have a short TR and short TE, that's a T1 time. However, a shorter uh, time than, than T1, then it becomes fat suppression. Fat suppression. Okay, so normally we see a t a T1s and T2s. Uh, when do we actually use fat suppression? Do you know? Uh, sir, uh, when we have some uh, pathology and we are uh, not sure whether it is a normal fat or uh, some lipoma or some fat tumor. Okay, so th there are two instances commonly where we use uh, fat suppression. The one is when you do a, a gadolinium stud study, okay? So okay. when you do a gadolinium study, when you inject something to, like a contrast into the body, and when yeah. you inject that it, it inflamed uh, uh, pathological process uh, to identify it even more, you do a fat suppression sequence with it. And secondly, you're absolutely correct. If you want to know that the fat that you have is pathological or not, you will do a fat suppression study for it, okay? So for oh. hips, knees, these are the two indications for doing fat suppression. Okay, so this oh. is a very, very quick thing way to understand. The T1 images will, will show uh, fluid uh, and everything else related to fluid as black. All the muscles yeah. will show an intermediate signal and they will be gray. And all fat will have a high signal, they will be white. Okay, in T1 images. So, in, in, and, and if you... And, Contrast enhances it. Yeah. That's when you need a fat uh, uh, suppression because it will give you pathological tissues such as tumors, areas of inflammation, infection. Okay, and they are mostly related to leaking of blood vessels, and therefore there is an increased uh, blood supply. Therefore, there is increased fluid in it. So you do a fat suppression. So you take the fat away. So you now know that that's a pathological problem. Okay. So basically, uh, the, the, it, 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 you can do both fat suppression in T1 and T2 images, but you have to have the time duration less than what you do for T1 and T2. If you do the duration less than what you need for T1, then it becomes a fat suppression for T1. And if you do a duration less than T2, then it becomes a fat suppression for T2. Okay? It, all it okay, is, so I got it. if you're looking at for T1, but you want to do a fat suppression in T1, then you'd use it. The, the two times, what was it there? There was a TE and a TR time. So for example, this is not, not correct, but I'm just giving you an example. The example I'm giving you is that, for example, it takes 20 sec milliseconds of TE and, and, and 20 milliseconds of TR time to give you a T1. So instead of 20, if you do 15, then you will have a T1 image, but it will be fat suppressed. Fat suppression. Oh, okay. okay. Now, if you need a hundred to get a T2 uh, of TR and a hundred of uh, uh, T TE to get a T2, and if you make that 50, it will not be a T1, but it will be a, a T2 fat suppressed image. So less right. than what you are doing right. for T1 and T2, it gives you a fat suppression. Right, sir. Right. Okay. I will show you some scans later. I just want you to understand the concept before we go forward. Okay. 
So when you're doing shoulder MRI scan, there are three different planes you take. And the most important thing is all the, if you're taking uh, uh, any plane, they should be parallel to your supraspinatus. Oh, okay. Okay, so you have T1, T2, fat suppressed, and fat suppressed are various things. I know what a stir is, I don't know what a PDF is, but apparently it is a fat suppressed uh, 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 study that you do. And you do coronal, exile, axial, and sagittal views, yeah? So when you're looking uh, at the coronal image, the important image is middle. So when you do an MRI scan, there's not just one picture, there's quite a few of them, isn't it? So you start taking pictures anteriorly and you go middle of it and you go posteriorly, okay? when you're in the coronal plane. But the middle bit is the most important bit if you want to look at pathology. So if you're looking at it from the front, you will see the supraspinatus, the scapula, and various other muscles, okay? So if you're looking at it quite anteriorly, then the subscap is the first muscle you will see, okay? If you're looking posteriorly, then you will see infraspinatus teres minor into it, okay? So this is the same picture and the same section it's coronal section, but it is uh, cutting it from front to back. Did you get that? So if, yes, sir. Yes. if the picture is very in the front, you will see subscapularis, obviously because now it's showing you anterior muscles, isn't it? As you go through the middle of the scapula, you will see uh, in the middle, you will see, see most more scapula, but no muscles, okay? So anteriorly, when you're anterior, you will see subscapularis. When you go a, a bit middle of the scapula, in the coronal section, you will see the supraspinatus and the scapula. And if you go posteriorly, you will see that it is teres minor. So if somebody shows you a coronal section of the shoulder, then if you see glenoid, then you are in the middle of your coronal plane. Okay? If you see glenoid. If you, oh, see, okay, if you see subscap, you're anterior to, to your plane. Okay? And if you, if you, if you see um, two muscles, infraspinatus teres minor, then your plane is very posterior on the coronal plane. Is that easy to understand? Yes, sir. It is easy enough. If you see subscapularis, then you know you're very interior on your cut. Okay, and it gives you a lot of information. There is not one image, it is a lot of images coming together. But if the subscapularis is completely shown to you, then you're very interior. And if the supraspinatus is shown to you with the glenoid, then you're in the middle of your picture. And if you see uh, uh, the two muscles, then you are very posterior in your pictures. And I'll tell you why it is important to know where you are. Like, okay. So then after oh. the coronal section, you see what is called the sagittal section, okay? And the sagittal section, you have supraspinatus in between the two uh, by of the, 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 the um, spine of the scapula and, and, and the coracoid going up, yeah, at the back of the club. There, there is a supraspinatus. Posteriorly, there will be subscap and then infraspinatus in front of it and then teres minor underneath it. Do you know what importance of this picture is for, for people who are doing shoulders? in this sagittal section, why is it important? Sir, it shows a, a sagittal Y-shaped image and in which normally the head of the humerus is centrally placed. No, no, it is not that. It is when you're trying to repair a cuff. Yeah, you need to know whether the supraspinatus quality and the, the infraspinatus quality is good so that you can repair it. Okay? And, oh. and and remember, we, we made, named a classification for this when we were doing cuff repairs. Remember, we were talking about it, that you look at it to tell you whether there's fat infiltration or not? Yes, sir. I remember, sir. What was it? Sir, it was uh, according to the size of the tear. Uh, that was uh, up to one centimeter. No, no, one to three classification. Centimeter. There was a classification I showed you where you want to decide whether you want to repair it or not. You look at it in the Y view and you look at the supraspinates and the content of fat in tear or not. That's a Gottlieb's classification, yeah? So that yeah. tells you whether this, this cuff is repairable or not. In this picture, the cuff is repairable because there's no fat in it. But if you had too much fat in it, then you wouldn't be able to repair it because now you know that the size is smaller and therefore it won't repair. Even if you stitch it, it will tear again. So the quality of the tendon is shown by this particular picture. So this is normal. Then you have a, a mild deformity where this is getting smaller. And you know the Y here, it is getting up to that level. If it goes below that level, it becomes moderate. And if it comes very low, it becomes a severe deformity, and therefore you can't repair it then. Okay, got this classification, remember that. Okay, sir. So, in, so that was sagittal, and we did coronal. Now if you look at the axial uh, anatomy, then the front is subscapularis, behind is infraspinatus, glenoid in the middle, and humerus. 
And then you can see the labrum very clearly in this particular picture. So if you want to look at the labrum, you look at the axillary nasri. If you want to look at the cuff, you look at the coronal uh, sections. And if you want to know whether you can repair it or not, you do look at the... Uh, sagittal section. Yes, good. So for the three section, sections you have in the MRI scan, each has individual uses. One tells you whether the cuff is intact or not. One tells you whether the labrum is intact or not. And then one tells you if you want to repair it, can you repair the cuff or not? Is it good quality or not? Is that, is that clear? Yes, sir. It is clear. So there's a reason why we do an MRI scan to find different things. It's not just because we want to have a look at it. Okay. It will give different, different scans will give you different things. Okay. So let's look at cuff tear. Okay. What would a cuff tear look like? So if you look okay. at this picture, can you tell me what's happening? What, what, picture, what, what image is this first of all? Of, uh, this is a coronal image okay. and it is a, in the center of the shoulder because yes. I can see the part of a glenoid. Very good. And what else can you see? Yes. Uh, I can appreciate some edema at the insertion of supraespinatus. So it's a T2 image. Uh, yes, a T2. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a uh, tell me again, it, it's a coronal section, it's a sagittal section, yeah? It, it is a coronal section coronal taken section, in the middle. T2 image which is showing the supraspinatus and there's a tear in the supraspinatus. Uh, yes, and near the insertion site. Exactly. So see how much information now you know just by looking the basics, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, so, so one, um, one difficulty we are having. Yeah. Uh, in recognizing whether it is a T1 or T2 image. Okay. So what do you think it is? T2. Uh, looks like a T2 because the fluid looks to be a bright. Yes, there, there is edema uh, of where the tear is. You will never have white fluid until you do a, a, a T2 image, isn't it? Even whether you fat suppress it or not, the fluid will still be white in a T2 image. If this was a T1 image, then you will not have any... Sorry? Okay, sir. So, uh, problem is that you told us that fate is bright in T1 and T2 as well. Yes. So in this MRI, we, I can't see a bright fade, sir. Yes, because we have done a, a T2, we have done a fat suppression in this picture. Fat, oh, fat suppression. Okay, okay. sir. Now you know. So okay. this is the coronal section, uh, which is going through the middle of the scapula, which is a T2 weighted image and it's fat suppressed. Yes, clear, sir. Now. In my first five minutes of telling you about MRI scan, how much information can you now look at when you look at an image, isn't it? Yes, sir. Are you able to see this? All you were looking at is cuff tear, hair, can hair. But now we're looking yeah. at an image. You can see whether it's a T1 or T2, where it is going through. Is it a coronal or what section it is? And it also tells you if there's a tear or not. Okay. Okay, so now uh, if you look at these pictures, what do you see in this picture then? Okay. First of all, uh, these are uh, coronal uh, images. Good. And uh, look to be a T1 image. So the first one is a T1 image, or the F second first one? one is uh, first one is T1 image. Okay. Second one is the uh, T2 image. And third Good. one is T2 image as well. This, the third one is a uh, T2, I think. Yes, but remember we said there will be a T1, T2, and then there will be a fat suppression image, isn't it? Yeah, fat separation. Okay, and it's going through the middle of the glenoid, so you can see the glenoid. You can see yeah. there is the AC joint arthritis touching the, the supraspinatus tendon. Yes, yeah. it, is, it is not torn, uh, and you can see that it is attached to this, and there is no uh, pathology which suggests there is anything else going on. Uh, yes, sir. Looks like a, a nor normal MRI, actually. It's not normal because the AC joint is touching the supraspinatus tendon. Okay. 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 So how do you know clinically whether the impingement is from AC joint or the impingement is from uh, acromion? Uh, when the impingement is from AC joint, we have positive cross adduction arm test. What is that? I don't know. Uh, we ask the patient to edit the arm or touch the opposite AC joint. Yeah, that's so called a scalp patient... test or a collar test. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, sir. If you have a collar or scarf test present, then you have AC joint impingement. If you have impingement, like a nearest test in the sign, but it doesn't do a scarf test, then it is a, 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 
a chromium problem, but if it does a scarf test, then it's an SEJ problem. Okay. So if you, if you look at these pictures again now, okay, what do you see here? Well, you can see what it's saying, isn't it? So basically you're in the middle of the uh, coronal plane. You can see there's a problem at the end of it, okay? But you can see that there is fibers in continuity. So it's a full thickness tear, but some of it is still attached to it and it's not retracted. So if you go completely posterior, it will show you some attachment and no edema, okay? But the easy thing to remember is that there is T1, T2, you need to know in the coronal section where it is going, what muscles you can see, and is it is it torn or not, whether there's edema or not, and is the fat being suppressed? Are we, are we okay so far? Uh, yes, sir. It is very much simple up to now. Yeah, good. Okay, so so this is why we wanted to do that particular uh, view where we had a, a Y view on it. When you have a tear, you have diagnosed the tear, you want to see whether they're repairable or not. The way they are repairable is they should not have no muscle atrophy and no fatty infiltration. Okay, and, and the, 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 the test I was going to show you on the side was called the fat occupancy ratio. Okay, you will understand that in a minute. I'm teaching you a lot of high profile stuff, but I cannot teach you something and leave out other things. If I have to teach you, I'll teach you everything. Whether you want to retain it or not, it's entirely your choice. But if you look at this picture here, okay, this is that Y picture we were looking at, yeah? Do you remember? So yes, sir. Yes. Respiratus uh, tendon. And this is all of it with fatty infiltration on it. So what you do is this is this is the S1 and this is the S2. So you measure these radii and then you divide them by each other. Okay, so if you have little fat, the ratio will be nearer one. If you have more fat, the ratio will be less than one. Do you, do you agree with that? See, if this is 10. Yeah, so I agree. Uh, the, so the, if, the ra if there is less fat, the ratio will be near one. If there's more fat, the ratio will be less than one. The other way to look at it is if you draw a line where the two Ys are forming, anything above that is repairable. Anything below that, you can't repair. Okay? Okay. So this okay. is to decide whether you have a operable or non-operable cuff tear. Fatty, uh, fatty infiltration yeah. is in the denominator, fatty radius. Yes, yes. So you, you will have, if it is more nearer to one, then you can actually repair them. If it's less than or more towards the zero, then it's not repairable, okay? And you can see the same thing here. This is uh, uh, more, more fat in here and, and, and less muscle, and this is a normal muscle. Can you see the difference now? So if you draw a line between the top of the uh, Y, there is muscle above it. Can you see that? Yes. That's a that's a, a layman's way of looking at it. Instead of doing the occupancy ratio, which is more scientific, if you draw a line up here, anything above that, uh, that is enough for to, for repair because the quality of the tendon is very good. Okay. Now, if you look at this one, if you draw a line, it it is just just below it or just above it. Okay. So that means that the muscle has contracted. There's a lot more fat into it. So the only and it is not repairable. You. The only information this gives you, which is very vital, is, is this cuff repairable or not? Okay, so you don't want to go and try to repair a cuff which is not repairable. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, also, if you do a coronal section here, you will see that there is fatty infiltration into the... Uh, 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 supraspendulous tendon. A normal one will look like this, completely plain, right? But in a fatty infiltration, you can see all this fat in it. That means that there is a lot more fatty infiltration and there, this cuff is repairable or not. Can you tell me whether this cuff is torn or not? This cuff is torn because it is from insertion, it is detected back. No, the, the supraspinatus is here. So to see a supraspinatus tear, you need to see an anterior picture, isn't it? This is giving you the middle of the glenoid. So your supraspinatus... Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, so this one is indirectly telling it's strong because the humerus is high. Okay, yeah. Yes, okay. But, but if you want to look at the supraspinatus being torn, you need to go anteriorly because the anterior is where the supraspinatus is, isn't it? So you can't comment on this that this is torn because uh, you won't be able to see the attachment of the supraspinatus because you have to take an anterior picture to look at it. Okay, okay. 
so, so today when you finish, you will be a lot more clever than most of your consultants when you go to see MRI scans of shoulders. Because now you know what you look for. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So remember, when you see, we, we discussed this very early, when you see the glenoid, you're in the middle of your picture. Okay. So a middle yes. of the picture will not tell you whether you have a supraspinatus tear or, or an infraspinatus teres minor tear. Okay. Right. So in now, the interior one, we cannot see the glenoid cavity. Yeah, for, for supraspinatus tear, you need to see the no glenoid at all. It has to be, you know, top of the whole thing we covered. Uh, if it's a massive tear, then on the glenoid view, you can see it retracting, but this is not retracting. It is still going to the end. You can see it going to the end, yeah? Okay. And in, in the this coronal pain, can we tell that there's a curve is repairable? Any ratio in this plane? There's no ratio. Or any this is muscle. what normal looks like, okay? This, this picture yeah. is only telling you that the size of the supraspinatus is smaller. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, there is no ratio, but it is telling you that the size of the cup is smaller and is filled with fat. Oh. So this is what this, on this picture we cannot uh, 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 diagnose that it is repairable or irreparable. Well, it is because uh, you can diagnose this uh, by saying that this is atrophied and there is fat infiltration. Now, atrophy and fat infiltration means that uh, the cuff has got a problem. So now, obviously we are doing orthopedics. You can't have a, a one view anyways. It says you have to have two views and then you will go to this view and you do the uh, uh, fat ratio. Well, yeah. That will then tell you that your cuff is now really bad and you can't repair it. You cannot make decisions okay. on one view anyway. But this is an indication and a direction and a hint to tell you that the cuff is atrophied and it's got fat in it. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, So what about this one? So this patient, you know how everybody does MRI scan these days, they don't do x-rays or anything or clinical. Everybody that comes in with a shoulder problem, they sent. So this patient was sent with a diagnosis of MRI or cough tear, right? And it was told to me that, look, the cough is all elevators, okay? And it's the right view because you're looking at it, the subscap which means the supraspinatus is, is, is in the right view. And they're telling me the supraspinatus is torn. And, and you can see in this picture that the supraspinatus is definitely torn. Can you see that, yeah? Yeah? So yes. What yeah. kind of image is this? This one. This is, this is uh, T1. Yeah, there's, if there was a torn and there was edema in it, you should see it, like, isn't it? So there's no edema, but you can see the tear in it, which is black, and black is water, yeah? Yeah. So the, it looks like the cup's torn, yes? Yes, sir. Okay. So if you look at the cup, now if you x-ray the patient, what do you see? There's a tuberosity fracture. We, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so nobody examined the patient, nobody took the street, nobody took plain film, but went straight to the MRI scan, and this was diagnosed as cough tear and was sent to me at my clinic, that this patient has got a cough tear, can you please assess him and see if arthroscopic repair needed? No. This was actually a Evolgen fracture of the supraspinatus. Yes. Can you see that, yeah? However, yeah. however, they did the right thing, but for the wrong indication, and why is that? So the cuff is the most important structure in the shoulder, right? You can see that the humerus is not aligned. Can you see that, yeah? So the tuberosity, uh, yes. the tuberosity fracture actually means that the cuff is intact, but not attached to the humerus. It is detected. Yeah, the bone has pulled it off, okay? So they did the right thing, but for the wrong indication. This person still needs reattachment of the tuberosity to tension the cuff again, okay? But the diagnosis was wrong. It was not a cuff tear, but an avulsion fracture, which is actually a cuff tear in, in disguise. Okay. What about this one? So it's a coronal picture. Uh, it's in the middle of the, the glenoid, yeah? What about what's happening here? Yeah, yeah. edema. Some edema is appreciated in the uh, humerus okay. and neck area, sir. So it's a T2 image, isn't it? Mm, when it says T2, yes, if you see edema, it's got fluid in it, it has to be T2. There can no other way you can see edema, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So what else can you see? What's happening here? Uh, there is a... Uh, uh, discontinuity. Okay. There, so, there is some discontinuity. Okay, so if you look at an, a cuff, it has two surfaces. Do you know that? Uh, yes, sir. Articular and bursal side. 
So, okay, so this is the articular surface is torn. Yeah. The, uh, the bursal side is intact. Although it's edematous, it's still intact. Yes? Yes. What's yes. the thing for this? It is a, a, a pasta, pasta, pasta lesion. Very good. It, Osama, it's a pasta lesion. What's a pasta lesion? Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, periosteal uh, avulsion of articular side of supra spinatus. Okay, so yeah. P is partial, A is avulsion. Yes. Partial avulsion of supra spinatus. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So P is partial, S is supraspinatus, T is tendon, A is avulsion, partial supraspinatus, tendon, avulsion. Okay, so now can you clearly understand this? This is a T2 image, it's a coronal image, and, and you can see there's a tear on the articular surface, but the bursal surface is intact. So this is a pasta lesion. Are we happy with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. कल को जो है ना जो कभी हमारा स्कैन देखो ना तो फिर सब लोगों को सवाल पूछने के क्या नजर आ रहे हैं हीरो बन जाए हीरो नहीं बनना है इम्तान तो पास कर लेना उसके बाद फिर नॉलेज भी दिखानी है ना आगे जाके सबने आगे जो है असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर बनना है फिर प्रोफेसर बनना है सर वही है वह टू सरफेस ना सुपर so, okay, so I actually will repair this. I will cut this, okay, from the bursal side. Yeah. I will cut this and then I'll repair it again because it is it's painful and, and partial tear means that the, the tendon is not working. It is not at full strength. So yes. if I see this patient, I will actually go in arthroscopically, cut this bit, let the tendon just free clean up, uh, divide the tuberosity and then reattach it again. So, with the anchor suture? Yes, I have a lot of anchor sutures that I use, but but for me, this is also torn. Although you can see it on the, I mean, I've got loads of pictures I didn't bring or put them in the image today, but when you arthroscope them, you can see the bursal tear very clearly. Sorry, the uh, um, articular surface tear. Uh, the bursal tear doesn't happen on its own. Well, not directly, but when you have a, a chromin rubbing against it, then you have fraying of this tendon. It's called kissing lesion. It's when the acromion touches the supraspinatus. Okay, but they don't yes. have that much tear. But the problem pathology is when they have an articular surface tear, then they have a problem because the shoulder goes in and out and causes pain. So therefore, I detach this and make it into a complete tear and then reattach it back on. Uh, which is more painful when we do a near impingement test? So, so uh, bursal side will be more symptomatic or? It will not get better in a near impingement test. You know, the near, when you inject them with a local anesthetic, yes, the, the bursal side and the acromion impingement will get better. But if it's an articular uh, tear, it will not get better. Okay. Because there is no way that your steroid is going to go into the articular surface. Well, there is. In a few days' time, it will go into blood mm -hmm. and become an endocrine and then be excreted from the blood to come to it. But initially, when you put it, they don't get better purely because the articular surface does not have the local anesthetic going to it. We cannot differentiate these two lesions within any uh, test or any yes, you uh, can. sign. If you inject them with the nearest test, you know, with the local anesthetic, then the, 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 um, the bursal surface tear or impingement will get better. The articular surface tear won't get better. But uh, how will you? How will we diagnose that there is MRI surface scan. or not? Okay, MRI. Okay, I'm right. Scan, you know. Okay. So in life, ये नहीं होता है कि मैं दरवाजा खोल लिया मैं दरवाजा खोला पहले नॉक करूँगा फिर मैं लोगों को बताऊँगा मैं कौन हूँ मैं अंदर आ सकता हूँ नहीं आ सकता हूँ You know the whole process. Orthopedics is not just looking at one symptom and making a diagnosis. You have to take history. You have to examine them. You have to do some special tests. Then you have to do them uh, in plain film X-ray. Once you've done the X-ray. And depending on what you want to do, you can do an ultrasound or an MRI scan to confirm your diagnosis. Okay? So, Sara Mila ke jo hai na, phir jo hai usse jo hai khichdi pakti hai. Ek ek chiz se nahi pak sakti. You have to have all the ingredients. Wahi wahi na sir, agar ham log isko examine karein aur hume near impingement sign or test dono naya positive mil jaye aur patient ko jo hai wo pain hai, to phir ham to kisi aur diagnosis mein chale jayenge ki wahi isko to tear hai nii, isko to sahi ho gaya. हाँ तो बस ये तालीम जो है ना तालीम एक दरिया है समंदर है जब तक उसमें छलांग नहीं लगाओगे तुम्हें कैसे पता चलेगा
ठीक है मेरी तो सत्रह साल गुजर गए सिर्फ शोल्डर्स करते हुए उसके बावजूद जब मैं मीटिंग्स में जाता हूँ मुझे अपनी कमी महसूस होती है कि लोगों को कितना आता है तो ये तो अभी इलम ऐसी चीज है जो कभी खत्म नहीं होती है और द मोर यू लर्न द मोर यू गेट स्कैड कि कितना सारा मुझे नहीं आता है वो रूमी ने कहा रूमी ने कहा था कि मैं जब पढ़ना लिखना शुरू किया तो मुझे पता चला कि मैं कितना बेवकूफ हूँ हमें भी पता चला इस वक्त हम लोग का टारगेट जो है ना एग्जाम पास करना ये सारी लड़ाई लड़ाई शड़ाई जो भी होती है ना लड़ने की ये आदमी आराम से जिंदगी में सारी जिंदगी सीखने में पड़ी हुई है इतना आना चाहिए कि एग्जाम पास कर जाए ठीक है ना तो आपको एग्जाम में ये मालूम होना चाहिए कि ये टी वन है कि टी टू है पैट सेप्रेशन है कि नहीं है कॉरल इमेज है सजाइटल इमेज है कि कौन सी इमेज है और ये इसमें क्या दिखा रहे हैं आपको आपको ये आपके एग्जाम को नहीं पता होगा तो मेरे ख्याल से आपको दिखाएगा कि आपसे पूछेगा क्या है वो उसमें ठीक है ना बट आई सही बात जब मैंने पढ़ाना होता है ना किसी सब्जेक्ट को तो मैं ऐसा नहीं कर सकता कि एक एक से दिखाऊं फिर दूसरी ना दिखाऊं आई विल टीच यू ऑल यू पिक व्हाट यू वांट फॉर योर एग्जाम ओके ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड अ पास्टलेशन ओके सो सो इट इट बेसिकली इसमें जो है ना ये सिंपल उसी चीज को दोबारा समझाने की कोशिश करें कि अब अब पर्सनल सर्विस पे नहीं है और आर्टिकल सर्विस पे टैर है तो जब आप ऑथोस्कोप करते हैं ना इसमें कैमरा डालते हैं तो यू कैन सी द टेंडन Uh, trying to detach itself from the tuberosity. So, this is the line that is made. This kind of thing is is partially torn. So that's why it is a past tense. Okay. If someone has a recurrent dislocation, then what do we do in that? Bankard, legend, or else something. So we are looking at the vertebrae. Okay. 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 तो उसकी होगी या उसका लेबर डिटैच हुआ होगा दीज आर दू थिंग्स यू कैन सी अब अब अगर मैं एग्जाम ले रहा हूँ और आप मेरे साथ बैठे हैं मुझे कहोगे बैंक कार्ड तो मेरा नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ये होगा बैंक कार्ड कौन था ठीक है अब पता नहीं एग्जाम में ये बताना है कि जो जो इंस्टेबिलिटी पेशेंट होते हैं जिसमें डिस्लोकेशन होती है वी आर लुकिंग फॉर वॉल्यूम टू फाइंड आउट दैट इज दिस जेंटमेन ए मल्टी डायरेक्शनल और वी आर लुकिंग फॉर लेबर चैट टू फाइंड आउट इज एटोमेटिक इवेंट और नॉट एग्जाम में ये आंसर देना है सही ठीक है वन क्वेरी सर आई है स्लैप लीजन एंड ऑल्सो दॉल्यूम ऑफ द लेबर चेयर एंड ऑल्सो शो यू सम हिल सैक लीजन बट इफ यू आर लुकिंग फॉर एन हिल सैक लीजन टू डायग्नोज वेदर यू वॉन्ट टू लैप चे Or you want to do a soft tissue repair, then CT scan is the the investigation of choice. Oh, okay. So recurrent dislocation. If you want to see multi-directional instability, you have to do an MRI arthrogram. MRI means MRI arthrogram. Yeah. Okay. 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 Very good. And what are you looking at? You're looking at humeral head. You're looking at glenoid. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Glenoid. Yeah. Me, kya dekhna hai ki jo jaise meniscus me triangle bana hota hai na black. Yeah. Yeah. Labrum me bhi triangle bana hota hai black. To isko normal hai ki nahi hai ye? Isme aap ye dekhenge ki a edema hua hua hai aur isme usko inflammation hui hui hai. Something's wrong with the anterior labrum. Yes, sir. Second picture me dekhenge to aapko nazar aayega. कि जब आपको T2 इमेज में देखते हैं कि there's a lot more problem there, okay? And if you look at the fat suppression, आप ये देखेंगे कि इसका पूरा margin ही पूरा blunt हुआ हुआ है। Ah yes. Okay. Indirectly, you can also see something here. What is this? This is a hill sack lesion. Very good. Hill sack. Okay. So you can also see a hill sack lesion. Can you see this here? Yes. But what view is this now? This is a coronal and the middle of the shoulder joint. Very good. See now you are understanding. Ten minutes, my kidney is a professor. Ban gaya ho. Isliye kya hai ki tum logo? Tumhara sabse bada jo hai na mushkil kam hai ki nobody teaches you. Sab assume karte hain ki tum kitab padhke kya seekh jaoge. Lekin you have to teach. Jo padna padne wala hoga na usko padne wala milna chahiye. Varna you cannot learn. Kitab padne se koi understanding nahi hoti hai. Hamare baas to inko bolenge radiologist ke paas ja ke seekh lo ye. लेकिन रेडियोलॉजिस्ट में तो आधे से ज्यादा मेरे पास जो रिजल्ट्स रेडियोलॉजिस्ट कहते हैं इतने फजूल रिजल्ट्स होते हैं मैं तो रेडियोलॉजिस्ट से बात भी नहीं करता हूं तो बेचारे जो है वो <laughs> कहते हैं कि हमसे पूछता भी नहीं है अब मेरे पास अपना अल्ट्रासाउंड होता है डिपार्टमेंट में खुद ही अल्ट्रासाउंड करता हूं पेशेंट्स का शोल्डर्स का 
और एम आर आई स्कैन भी मैं खुद रीड करता हूँ क्योंकि वो जो रेडियोलॉजिस्ट होता है ना डिपेंड करता है आपके पास कौन है तो सेंग रेडियोलॉजिस्ट वो मेरा एक स्टूडेंट था शाकिर उसका नाम है वो यहाँ पर राइटिंगटन में कंसल्टेंट रेडियोलॉजिस्ट लगा हुआ है पिछले डेढ़ साल से तो वो पाकिस्तान में पहुंचा हुआ है लेकिन कल वो कह रहा था मुझे रात को दस बजे वो आपके साथ जो है सेशन करेगा एम आर आई ऑफ स्पाइन स्पाइन पढ़ाएगा तो वो जो आपको पढ़ाएगा ना तो वो आपको बड़ा स्टैंडर्ड की पढ़ाई करेगा वो वो जो है ना तो वो तमीजदार लड़का भी है वो अच्छा आदमी भी है उसको आता भी है बहुत सारा तो ही साइड टीच टूमारा तो तो अब आप इसको देख लें कि इस पिक्चर में आपको नजर आ गया कि इसका इंटीरियर लेवल टायर है ठीक है और नॉर्मल जो होता है ना टोटली पूरा का पूरा ब्लैक होता है और उसमें ट्राइंगल बना होता है जैसे ये ट्राइंगल नहीं बना हुआ है तो जो टायर होगा ना उसमें एक तो ये ब्लंट हो जाएगा दूसरा उसके आस पास होगा ये साइड जो है ये नॉर्मल है कैन यू सी दैट बिल्कुल डिमार्केटेड ट्रायंगल बना हुआ है इस साइड को नहीं है एक तो उसके एज ब्लंट हो गई है दूसरा उसको जो है डिमा हो गया है तो नाउ यू नो दैट इज एन इंटीरियर लेवल टायर ओके वो जो कहते हैं पेरियोस्टल स्लीव इंटैक्ट है नहीं है सर वो क्या चीज होती है दिखाते हैं सर आपको आप आप यू आर ट्राइंग टू रन बिफोर यू कैन वॉक अच्छा 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 आप क्या समझते हैं कि मैं आपको शोल्डर पढ़ाऊंगा और आपको ऐसी चीजें नहीं दिखाऊंगा सही है ठीक है और कोरोनल में सर मुश्किल होती है कि व्हिच साइड इज एंटीरियर व्हिच इज पोस्टीरियर ओके सर उसमें जो है ना इसका मुश्किल इस तरह नहीं होती है कि आपको पता है कि कौन सा मसल एंटीरियर होता है कौन सा मसल पोस्टीरियर होता है कौन सा मसल एंटीरियर होता है कौन सा पोस्टीरियर होता है एंटीरियर इज सबस्केपुलरिस एंड पोस्टीरियर इज इनफेर पोस्टीरियर इनफेर स्पिनेटस या बिग मसल एंड स्मॉल मसल ठीक है या पर जो है ना डेल्टॉइड है ये इधर स्किन है ठीक है अगर छोटा मसल है ना तो या तो टीरिस माइनर होगा या इनफेर स्पिनेटस होगा ठीक है सही और जो जो बड़ा मसल होगा ना वो वो सब स्कैपुलरिस होगा तो जो बड़ा मसल है वो एंटीरियरली और छोटा मसल पोस्टीरियर तो ये एंटीरियर हो गया ये पोस्टीरियर हो गया ये तो एक्सिल में और कोरोनल में सॉरी ये तो एक्सिल में है ना सर हां कोरोनल में जो है ना सुपीरियर और इंफीरियर होगा ना उसके अंदर और उसके बाद उसकी कंट्रोल पता चलेगा कि आपको क्या नजर आ रहा है कि आप एंटीरियर है मिडिल या पोस्टीरियर है अगर आपको ग्लेनोइड नजर आ रहा है तो आप मिडिल में अगर आपको जो है ना सब स्कैप नजर आ रहा है तो आप एंटीरियर में और आपको अगर दो मसल नजर आ रहे हैं तो आप पोस्टीरियर हैं उसने उसको मेरे पास भेजा था कि इसको तुम थोड़े शोल्डर के अप्रोचेस सिखा दो तो मैं जब आया दिखाया उसको तो उसने मुझे कहा कि मैंने उसको पूछा क्या है मसल है तो उसने कहा ये जो है सुपरस्पिनेटिस है तो मैंने कहा सुपर स्पिनेटिस एक तो इंटीरियर नहीं होता है दूसरा इतना बड़ा नहीं होता है तीसरा इतना डीप नहीं होता है तो मैंने उसको पूछा कि तुम्हें जो है ना जॉब किसने दी है तो वो पहुंच गया जाके उसने जो है अपने मूर साहब को कहा कि मिस्टर शाह ने मुझे पूरा भुली किया है मुझे उसने पढ़ाया नहीं है मुझे उसने तंग किया है आप लोग मैं इसलिए पढ़ाता हूँ मैं इंजॉय करता हूँ कि आप लोगों को बेसिक्स आती है अब अगर कोई जो है सब स्कैप को देख के कहे ये सुपर स्पिनेटिस है तो आपके जहन में तीन चीजें आती होंगी कि एक तो इसको नेट में नहीं आती है ठीक है दूसरी इसने किताब नहीं पढ़ी हुई है और तीसरी ये है कि ये बगैर प्रिपेयर हो गया आज जो है ना थिएटर में स्क्रब होने के लिए आया हुआ है सो इसको देख लें आपके बहुत बड़ा मसला है सब स्कैप ये इंटीरियर हो गया ये पोस्टीरियर हो गया तो इसको इंटीरियर लेबल टायर है ठीक है अच्छा जब इस सेक्शन में जाते हैं ना तो उसमें जैसे हमने इंटीरियर मिडल एंड पोस्टीरियर किया था ना तो इसमें सुपीरियर मिडिल एंड फेरियर होता है या yeah. अगर आपको बाइसेप्स टेंडन नजर आने लगा है तो आप सुपीरियर लिए हैं अगर आपको बाइसेप्स टेंडन जो है वो खत्म होते हुए नजर आए तो आप मिडिल हैं और अगर आप उसके बाद जो है कोई भी बाइसेप्स टेंडन नजर आए तो आप इनफेरियर होते हैं उसकी रीजन ये होती है कि जो 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 इक्वेटर होता है ग्लेनॉइड उसको अगर आप हाफ काटे ना तो उससे ऊपर अगर जितने भी लेबरम की डिटैचमेंट होती है वो नॉर्मल होती है वो एबनॉर्मल नहीं होती है सही एंड दिस समझिए सर जो इक्वेटर होता है ना उसको ग्लेनॉइड का बना दे इक्वेटर तो उसके ऊपर अगर लेबरम की डिटैचमेंट होती है ना तो इट इज नॉट पैथोलॉजिकल उसके नीचे जो होती है वो पैथोलॉजिकल होती है उसको क्या कहते हैं जो 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 लेबरम का जो है डिटैचमेंट होती है ऊपर की तरफ उसको वो कहते हैं स्लैब नहीं स्लैब स्लैब पैथोलॉजिकल हो गई ना नहीं 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 पैदा होता है जिसमें जो मिडिल ग्रेन ह्यूमर लिगामेंट और जो सुपीरियर लेबरम होता है वो ज्वाइन हो जाती है और उसका एक स्ट्रक्चर बनाता है इसमें बीच में फोरमेन बन जाता है इसके अंदर Uh, and it's not the topic for today. We'll talk about it later. But anyway, so now you can see what is normal. What is normal? The labrum, what is that? Now, the pointed black, absolutely meniscus. Kind of. Okay. 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 Okay.
ठीक है अगर उसका ब्लंटिंग होगी मार्जिन की उसके पॉइंटनेस खत्म हो गया और उसके डिमा गया ना तो डेजर्ट है ठीक है अब वी नॉट टॉक अबाउट ये इधर जो हाफ होता है ना इससे ऊपर अगर जो है ना इंटीरियरली प्रॉब्लम हो ना तो वो बैंक कार्ड नहीं चलाता वो जो है नॉर्मल वेरियंट होता है ठीक है उसके बाद जो नीचे इधर भी टैर हुआ इधर भी एंटीरियर पुस्ट है वी कैन फाइंड आउट ओके अगर ऊपर से निकल गया तो उसको स्लैप कहते हैं उसको स्लैप का मतलब क्या है उसके बाद जो अगर आपके पास बैंक कार्ड में लेबरम जो है उसके साथ ग्लेनाइड भी जो है बोन बैर हो जाती है तो उसको ग्लैड लीजन कहते हैं जिसमें आर्टिकुलर कार्टेज लॉस होती है ठीक है यस बी एम आर एस स्कैन में उसका बोन यहाँ से ब्रूज होगा और ब्रंट होगा ठीक है अगर जो है वो पेरियोस्टम जो है पूरा का पूरा खेच के पीछे ले जाता है ना स्ट्रिप कर जाता है तो वो एम आर एस स्कैन में ऐसा लगता है कि लेबरम है साथ में उसके अंदर एडिमा पीछे जा रहा है उसको पर्थिस लीजन कहते हैं ठीक है अगर ये पीछे जाके फिर बोन के साथ चिपक जाता है ना तो इस तरह की पिक्चर देता है उसको एलबसा लीजन कहते हैं क्यूट लॉन्गिट्यूटल पेरियोस्टल स्लीव एवल्यूजन तो ये वाली लीजन की सेकंड स्टेज होती है जब वो क्रॉनिक हो जाता है तो वो यहाँ से डिटैच होके इधर आगे फंस जाता है और ये तो बहुत ही आसान है हमने अपनी थ्यूरी में इसी तरह रट्टा मारी थी इसको क्या रट्टा लगाया था यही चीज जो आप बता रहे हैं कि डिटैच होकर ब्लड हो जाती है जी जी एक में पेरियोस जिसमें बैंक कार्ड होता है उसमें पेरियोस्टल स्लीव इंटेक्ट नहीं होती जो पर्थीज में उसमें पेरियोस्टल स्लीव इंटेक्ट होती है हमने इस तरह याद किया वेरी गुड जिस तरह भी याद किया हो आपने जो है पास कर लिया ये आपका क्रेडिट है आप इंशाल्लाह जो है दोबारा इम्तिहान नहीं देंगे इसी बारे में सब कुछ खत्म कर जाएंगे इन उसके बाद ये देखें अब आप ये देखें बैंक कार्ड लीजन में सारा का सारा डिटैच हो जाता है जो पर्थीज लीजन होता है उसके अगर आप देखें ना तो ये देखो स्लीव यहाँ तक निकली हुई है इसी का आइडिया है और जो ये जो स्लीव एवल्व होने के बाद नीचे जाके डिटैच अटैच हो जाती है ना तो फिर वो इस थिंग पे पिक्चर में चली जाती है कैन यू सी दैट एलिप्स सर यस सर वी कैन सी ओके सो नाउ यू कैन सी द डिफरेंस इसमें जो पेरियोस्टम नजर आ रहा है पूरा का पूरा नीचे जाते हुए इसमें जो टोटली सारा का सारा बैंक कार्ड है और इसमें डिटैच होकर वापस अटैच हो जाता है इसकी इसमें एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट चीज नजर आ रही है कैन यू सी व्हाट दिस इज एलसेक लीजन सर वेरी गुड सो इसमें एडिमा भी बहुत ज्यादा हुआ हुआ है टू बी ऑनेस्ट यार एनीवे या अच्छा अगर शोल्डर पेन में लिमिटेशन ऑफ मूवमेंट की तो उसकी क्या डायग्नोसिस बनती है एडेसिव कैप्सुलाइटिस ओके और और मैकेनिकल ब्लॉक रोटेटर कफ टेयर नहीं 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 तीन डायग्नोसिस होती है जब शोल्डर नहीं हिलता है एक होती है डिसलोकेशन एक होती है आर्थराइटिस एक होती है मैकेनिकल ब्लॉक और सही सही तो एक आप डिसलोकेशन कैप्सुलाइटिस या फ्रोजन शोल्डर ये तीन डायग्नोसिस हैं आपने अगर एक्सरे कर लिया ना उसमें डिसलोकेशन नहीं है तो वो एक्सक्लूड हो जाएगा उसमें आर्थराइटिस नहीं है तो वो एक्सक्लूड हो जाएगा इसका मतलब है कि जो जो फ्रोजन शोल्डर होता है उसकी डायग्नोसिस बाय एक्सक्लूजन होती है और अगर किसी ने डिफाइन किया है या किसी को याद है डेफिनेशन तो व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ फ्रोजन शोल्डर It is a, a disorder in which active and passive movements of the shoulder in the all the direction are reduced. So it is true, but the British Elbow Shoulder Society ne this uh, definition diya hai ki it is a, a a pathology where external rotation is limited. Okay. Yes. ठीक है. So correct definition diya hai, and what you just said, uh, Satish, is not also wrong. The massive rotator cuff tear may be the limitation of the. हाँ लेकिन वो बिल्कुल जो फ्रोजन नहीं होता है ना फ्रोजन का मतलब ये है कि कुछ नहीं होता है बिल्कुल अपने अपने फ्रोजन शोल्डर देखा है यस यस सर सर बिल्कुल कुछ नहीं होता है उसमें जब आपने देखी है कभी भी जो है कम हिलता है लेकिन जब उसमें फ्रोजन जो कफ टेयर होता है ना उसमें अगर एक्टिवली नहीं होता तो पैसेवली आप उसको मूव कर सकते हैं यस ठीक है ना yes. तो मैं पहले भी कहा ना एक चीज से डायग्नोसिस नहीं होती है बहुत सारी चीजें मिलके जो है ना हलवा पकड़ा जाता है यू कैन डायग्नोस व्हाट इज रॉन्ग विद दिस पर्सन कभी भी जो है ना एक सिम्टम या एक इन्वेस्टिगेशन या एक उससे डायग्नोसिस नहीं करनी है जो जो चीज मैं आपको सिखा रहा हूँ ना वो ये है कि कल को जब आप डॉक्टर बन जाएंगे ना 
तो आप जो है बेफजूल बे मकसद इन्वेस्टिगेशन नहीं करेंगे आपकी डायग्नोसिस ठीक होगी और मरीज आपको दुआएं देता हुआ जाएगा ऐसे नहीं होगा कि मरीज आया उसको अपने बात भी नहीं की उसको सीधा हमारे स्कैन में घुसेड़ दिया गया हमारा स्कैन कर गया हमारे पाकिस्तान में तो लोगों के पास पैसे भी नहीं होते हमारा स्कैन करने के लिए बड़ी जबरदस्त है ना प्रैक्टिस होनी चाहिए आदमी को क्लिनिशियन होना चाहिए आदमी को जो है सारी टेस्ट आने चाहिए तो तभी जो है आपकी सक्सेसफुल होगी प्रैक्टिस एनीवे सर जो फ्रोजन शोल्डर होता है ना उसमें यहां पे ये मिडिल पार्ट ऑफ द आपका ग्लेनोइड होना चाहिए वो नजर नहीं आ रहा आपकी मिडिल पिक्चर है और उसमें ये सब कुछ हो गया तो इसका मतलब ये फ्रोजन शोल्डर की हमारी डायग्नोसिस है डू यू रिमेंबर व्हेन वी सॉ द मिडिल पार्ट ऑफ योर सेक्शन इन द कॉर्नल सेक्शन वहां पे ग्लेनोइड नजर आता था ना जी जी राइट नजर नहीं आ रहा है इफ यू कांट सी द ग्लैंड दैट मींस यू हैव अ फ्रोजन शोल्डर सो हाउ वी कैन से दैट दिस इज अ मिडिल पोर्शन एग्जैक्ट मिडिल पोर्शन बिकॉज़ आई एम ओनली शोइंग यू वन पिक्चर बट व्हेन यू सी योर पिक्चर यू विल बी एबल टू सी द होल रन ऑफ फिल्म्स ओके उसमें क्या होगा कि आपको एंटीरियरली जो है उसमें सबस्कैप नजर आएगा फिर उसको थोड़ा थोड़ा आप मूव करते रहेंगे सबस्कैप छोटा छोटा होता है ग्लैंड नजर आएगा फिर ग्लैंड छोटा छोटा होता है आपको इंफ्रास्पेरेंस सीरीज माइनर नजर आएगा तो ये तो मैंने सिर्फ आपको एक तस्वीर दिखाई है इसमें आपको ग्लेनाइड नजर नहीं आ रहा है तो जब आप उसको तस्वीर देखेंगे तो यू विल बी एक्सपेक्टिंग कि आफ्टर थोड़ी दफा रोल करने के नेक्स्ट पिक्चर में ग्लेनाइड नजर आएगा लेकिन जब आपको नहीं नजर आ रहा है इन द मिडिल ऑफ इट दैट दैट मींस सॉल्व फ्रोजन शोल्डर देन हैव यू एवर सीन एन ऑस्कोस्कोपिक फ्रोजन शोल्डर नहीं सर टिपिकल फीचर क्या होती है सर रिड्यूस्ड कैप कैप्सुलर वॉल्यूम एक तो वो होती है दूसरी सब स्कैप नजर नहीं आता है अच्छा जब आप कैमरा डालें ना तो जब कैमरा डालते हैं तो ऊपर मैं किसी दिन दिखाऊंगा आराम से आपको वीडियो ऑस्कोस्कोप की तो ऊपर बाइसेप्स टेंडन नजर आता है वहां से फिर आप नीचे आए तो मिडिल के लिए ह्यूमन नजर आता है फिर सब स्कैप नजर आता है फिर लेबर नजर आता है सो इन 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 फ्रोजन शोल्डर वो आपको बाइसेप्स के बाद सारा रेड होता है ना आपको जो है मिडिल ग्लैंड ह्यूमन नजर आता है ना बाइसेप जो स्कैप सब स्कैप नजर आता है ना कुछ लेबर कुछ भी नजर नहीं आता है एवरीथिंग इज कवर्ड विद दीस टिश्यूज So what is this then? So we are in the middle of the middle glenoid. of the yeah, yeah, and there is edema on the glenoid, and also there is thickening of the tendon. The tendon not for you, it's thickened. Wow, wow. This means that it has caused impingement, or it has supraspinatus, or acromion. So you can see the acromion of arthritis. We use for this is a picture of tendinopathy. This means impingement, or it has tendon hyperreactive. Wow, wow. It's against inflamed tendon. Say. These are all boring pictures anyway. But if you if you're doing an MRI scan, you can actually see that the scapula is broken in this particular picture. Yeah. So you can yes. see pre-D reconstruction of this. Okay. So, so if the patient complains of pain when he's throwing, then the diagnosis obviously he's got a slap lesion, isn't it? Yeah. How do you test yeah. slap lesion? Extensor uh, rotation will be more, and internal rotation will be. डाउनवर्डर अपवर्ड फोर्स सर टेस्ट में और अब्राइन टेस्ट में क्या फर्क होता है सर ओब्राइन टेस्ट में आर्म को हम एडिडक करते हैं और उसमें हम पहले प्रोनेट करते हैं उसके बाद सुपिनेट करके देखते हैं दोनों में करते हैं जो जो सुपरस्पिनेट स्ट्रेस टेस्ट होता है ना इट इज इन द प्लेन ऑफ द स्कैपुलर उसको 30 डिग्रीज में एबडक्ट करते हैं और पाम फेसिंग अप और उसको आप पेन उसको होता है या नहीं होता है फिर थम पॉइंटिंग डाउन पेन होता है या नहीं होता है इसी तरह जो जो ओब्राइन टेस्ट कहते हैं या जिसको एम्प्टी कैम साइन कहते हैं जो सुपरस्पेनेट उसके स्लैप रीजन के लिए है उसमें डक्ट करके नॉट इन दर्म ऑफ दैपलर बट नियर टू द बॉडी वही पाम को आप रजिस्ट करते हैं फिर उसके बाद उसको थम डाउन करने को कहते हैं कि भाई इसको थम डाउन करो तो अगर उसको पेन शुरू जाता है तो वो स्लैप रीजन कहलाता है इसको हम लोग जो ना एम्प्टी कैन साइन कहते हैं हाथ में अपने कैन पकड़ा हुआ है और उसको जो आप खाली करेंगे तो उसमें पेन शुरू हो जाता है बाइसेप्स टेंडन के साथ ओके सर ओके और और दिस इज व्हाट इट लुक्स लाइक यू कैन सी दैट देयर इज एडिमा इन द जॉइंट एंड यू कैन सी एट द टॉप देयर इज एडिमा वेयर द बाइसेप्स टेंडन इज यू कैन सी 
very clearly in this picture. And when you do a T2 image, the whole thing is edematous. So this is a slap lesion. This is a biceps tendon, and it, it's been pulled off from the top. Biceps tendon attached to the anterior or posterior labrum? Uh, so predominantly posterior. Posterior. Yeah. Predominantly yeah. posterior. The labrum is continuous as a biceps tendon. This guy is MCQ. Yeah. I pass it to the MCQ. Okay, so you can see it a lot clearer now. Yeah, it's a good slap lesion in the data, and you can see uh, uh, that there is it has been pulled off. So it is not a bank card lesion because we are higher up. We can see the biceps yeah. tendon there. Therefore, it is it is telling you that whatever has been pulled off is is the slap rather than the bank card. Okay. Okay. I think I'm finished with with uh, cuff tears or, or shoulders. Are, are you got stamina to do the knee, or should we do it first thing tomorrow morning? Sir, we have yes, the stamina. Sir. It depends upon you. Sorry? Sir, we have the stamina. If you have time, you can continue. I have a little bit of 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 a and then we'll come back and, and do do uh, um, uh, knee, yeah? Okay, sir. Okay, that's good. So we'll stop for five minutes and I'll come back again. Then, all right? Okay, all right. Okay.